YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and today I cannot stop thinking about Nova Scotia and all of the vintage treasures that we found when we went on our trip there. How long can you stay like that? I don't though? want the... You're so East Coast right now, <laughs> like you need to walk around like this. So since I can't stop thinking about Nova Scotia and all of the amazing finds that we found while we did antiquing and thrifting the whole time we were on our trip on a piece of furniture that you will probably recognize that I actually restored about a year ago. But as we're changing some of the things that we have around our house and we're really minimalizing, we want to just keep items that we really, really want to have in our home. And one of the pieces was a bottom of a china cabinet that was Philip's grandmother's. I want to do a restore on it today and make it fit the vibe of what we're going for in our house now. So I'm going to use some gorgeous nautical paint and do a little bit of a restore on this cabinet so we can keep it where we really want it in our home. First thing I always do when I'm restoring a piece of furniture is remove all of the hardware. It makes things so much easier. And I want to do a restore on the original hardware that's on this piece anyways. Many of you are going to recognize this piece and you're like, don't paint it because it does look really cool the way that it is with this gorgeous peacock that we did on the front. But I want to actually make this a nautical vibe and so it's just not going to go with what we have in our house now that we really know what we want for everything. So I want to take this hardware off, give it a really good clean and sanding and get painting. I know that you're curious, I know that you're strong, but life can be furious and things can go wrong. You go, you go, we're better off tomorrow, but who knows, who knows if we get joy or sorrow. When I created the peacock design, I just did a really light sponge paint. And so I'm really lucky now that I want to change what I'm doing with this, that these edges that I actually put the white paint on are not raised. That would be bringing out the actual rotary sander and really blasting this and making it super smooth if that was the case. But because it's super flat, I'm going to do just a really light sand with some soft sand grip paper. Just make sure that it's really, really smooth on the front here. And then we get to clean it all off and get painting in a gorgeous nautical color. I just want to make sure I touch up any spots that need it before I start painting. Prep work is key. Still looks good after I see it. <laughs> I'll turn it back now. <laughs> look terrible so when you're painting furniture don't worry don't panic after the first coat because they never look good the first coat if your first coat looks good you're probably using way too much paint thinner coats are better than one thick one <laughs> I try to keep original hardware on furniture if I can. If it's damaged or really can't be restored, then sometimes I'll just buy new. But for the most part, I like to either use the original or find vintage that can go back on something vintage, like secondhand stores, even at yard sales. Sometimes you can find bins or at furniture auctions, even Habitat for Humanity. So if you're looking for hardware, look for secondhand first because you can find really unique pieces rather than buying something new from the store. I'm gonna use some gold metallic spray paint and put this spray on this actual hardware. And then I think I'm gonna distress the hardware just a little bit in the end. Put a little bit on in a few minutes, right? Thinner coats, a few thin coats, flip over the little handle on it, coat underneath and then bring it into dry. 
do like a tiny mist maybe from this way and then we'll go in and let it dry. Ooh. Something that I get asked all the time in direct message or even in email is what do I do to protect the furniture that I flip? There's a couple different ways that I like to do this. One is with an acrylic polyurethane or I like to use a Minwax finishing paste. I picked this up at my local home hardware. It is my absolute favorite. I've been using this for the past several years doing furniture and it hasn't failed me yet. When you're looking for something to do for a protection, you wanna make sure that it's non-yellowing. That's something that when I first was doing furniture, I made just one mistake in the very beginning and one of the pieces that I painted a very soft white cream color did have a slight yellowing to it. So I learned the hard way, so don't learn the hard way. Take my advice, make sure that it's non-yellowing. What I like to do is if it's a piece that's gonna be inside, I use this Wood Shield Quick Dry and it's an acrylic polyurethane clear coat. You can buy this in a couple different brands at Home Hardware, but this is the one that I usually use. And when you put it on, it's gonna be a little bit white and milky and then it will dry completely clear. I like to do a couple of coats and then your furniture is protected for a lot of wear and tear. We have boys, dogs, you know, rough on furniture in our house. And so this has been really durable for us. A Minwax finishing paste, you're just gonna use a lint-free rag, rub it in circles all over the piece. This is all gonna happen before you put your hardware on. So I've already done the bottom of this and I'm just going to do the top. The tip to getting your protective layer on nice and smooth is to just use very thin coats. Thin coats are always better to do a couple rather than one thick one. And once you go over an area, you don't wanna hit that area again with your brush until it's completely dry. It's better to miss a few spots on your first patch and then go back when it's all dry and do another coat. If you actually go back over the area that you were already working on, it's going to start to pill up and it won't be self-leveling like it's supposed to. So good luck with protecting your furniture. If you have any other questions, just send me a message or write it in the comment section. I'm really curious before I get this staged up, what colors are you guys decorating with this year for Christmas? I think I'm going to give this a little bit of a festive vibe. And this year I'm excited because I'm using some non-traditional Christmas colors for our decor, using blues, grays, and golds instead. And then adding in white, of course, like I do every season. So let me know in the comment section, what colors are you decorating your house with this season? It's pretty amazing that just in one afternoon, a little bit of paint, a tiny bit of spray paint, and a little bit of elbow grease can really change the look of a piece. I took this from being kind of a boho peacock vibe to something that's a little more nautical. I even staged it with just a little bit of a Christmas vibe because of course that's the holiday around the corner. I think this is gonna go more with some of the styles of things that we're putting in our home now. I absolutely love the beauty tone paint. It works amazing on it. So if you wanna pick up some of that kind of paint, you can get it at Home Hardware. All the information is down below. Below. but it's just amazing how you can just really transform something pretty quickly with just a little bit of extra work. So this is how the cabinet turned out. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground that I think has been super fun since starting my YouTube channel is that you guys have been inspired to do your own furniture flip pieces and sending me the pictures through Instagram or through email of what you're working on. So if you guys are working on a project that you wanna share with me that you've been inspired by doing some of your own vintage furniture flips, please send me the messages and the pictures because I love seeing what you guys are doing. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, you can just go to at Alicia English, it's all down below. And if you wanna follow Philip as well, you can find his information down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and being part of this creative journey that we're on. We love having you part of our YouTube family. I love you and I will see you tomorrow.